Hi, this is Steve Novella from the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe podcast. I hope you're enjoying our TikTok videos. One of the biggest requests that we get is for a series of TikTok videos going over the logical fallacies, cognitive biases, heuristics, that sort of thing. So we're going to do that. I'm going to start with this video about the informal logical fallacies and talk about probably the first one you need to learn about when exploring logical fallacies. So first, what is a logical fallacy? It basically means that the logical connection between a premise and a conclusion is not valid. Uh, the, the logic doesn't follow. In fact, the, the most basic type of informal logical fallacy is the non sequitur, which literally means that it doesn't follow. So for example, if I said, well, a equals B and B equals C, therefore A equals D. Well, that doesn't follow. There's no logical connection there. So that's a, that would be an invalid logic or a logical fallacy. Now, there are different types of logical fallacies. What most people on social media, on the internet, are talking about when they're referring to a logical fallacy is the informal logical fallacies. Now, a formal logical fallacy is like a mathematical statement. It's either true or it isn't true. A, a formal logical fallacy refers to a statement that has to be not true. It's always not true. Whereas the informal logical fallacies are context dependent. It depends on how you're using it exactly. They're relative. And what they're for really is to police your own thinking, to make sure that you are not falling for any lazy logical arguments that you are thinking internally consistently and in a very tight logical way. Uh, however, they're often used not as a way of making sure that your thinking is as valid and tight as possible, but as a weapon against the arguments of other people. Now, it's okay to, to try to honestly try to dissect, dissect other arguments. That's fine. But you could, some people on, on the internet, as you might imagine, are a little bit trigger happy about throwing out logical fallacies as if that's a way to automatically win an argument. And that leads me to the first logical fallacy I want to talk about in this series, the fallacy fallacy. Now, what is that exactly? That means either that you are sort of reframing someone else's statement to make what is otherwise a valid statement sound as if it's a logical fallacy. For example, you know, I might say that, well, you know, the 99% of scientists who are working in the area of evolutionary biology or biology agree that the evidence is overwhelming that evolution occurred, right? That's a pretty valid statement. But somebody might say, aha, that's an argument from authority because you're referring to what the experts believe. It's like, well, an argument from authority really is when you say that this is true because this expert believes it, not, re not referring to the community of scientists and the evidence, which is what that statement is really doing. It's getting at how much evidence there is and how we know how much evidence there is as non-experts. Well, you know, we like to listen to what the experts have to say. That's not a logical fallacy. That's a valid statement. But you could make it seem as if it is. That's part of the fallacy fallacy. The other part is to say that, well, because you committed a logical fallacy, which again, you may have shoehorned, your conclusion is therefore wrong. And that's just not true. That in and of itself is a fallacy. That's the fallacy fallacy as well. Because I could use or anybody could use an invalid logic or an unsound argument in order to support a conclusion that happens to be true. Remember, with the informal logical fallacies, the conclusion does not have to be wrong, right? I could say, well, you know, there must be a Democrat in the White House because the sky is blue. It's like, well, the sky is blue and there is a Democrat in the White House, but that's not, those two things are logically not connected to each other at all. The conclusion was correct. The logic was still invalid. Um, so the, my recommendation to you, you know, if you really are interested in learning the informal logical fallacies, make sure you are doing it as a way to improve your own thinking, to improve your own arguments. Don't just look at this as a weapon that you use to attack people online. First of all, rhetorically, it's not really very effective. You know, it, 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 it doesn't really advance the conversation very much if you're using it in a, in a uh, accusatory way. It really just makes you come off sounding like a jerk a lot of the times. You're better off 
using it as a tool, not a weapon. Use it as a tool to understand arguments in general, your own arguments in particular. Do, do not try to frame anything someone else says as a logical fallacy. In fact, you should be trying to frame it in the best possible light that is you know, the, 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 uh, the virtue of assuming, assuming the best form of an argument uh, that someone else is giving, the, the virtue of charity, right? The principle of charity. So if you do that and you, and you can still argue against their position, even giving it the best possible interpretation, then you probably are in a strong position. If you have to knock it down by making it seem as if the logic is invalid, even when it, it isn't obviously so or objectively so, then you're probably just committing the fallacy fallacy and you're the one who's committing the logical fallacy.